Petition. In this video, we are going to take a look at a Calculus 3 topic where we use Lagrange of multipliers to find extreme values of a surface. In this video, we're going to do two examples given one constraint. I'll have a different video where I'm going to uh, show examples using two constraints. So this video with one constraint, we're going to use Lagrange multipliers. So taking a look at the screen over here, this is an application of your partial derivatives. So we're going to find partial derivatives on the left-hand side of the equation with respect to x, y, and z of our function, of our surface, okay? We set that equal to lambda, that's our Lagrange multiplier of lambda times partial with respect to x, y, z of our constraint. G is our constraint. F is our uh, surface and G would be our constraint. And we're using this Lagrange multiplier in this system to set up a system of equations. We're going to utilize a system of equations to find our critical points. And once we do find our critical points through this uh, system of equations, then we can analyze our critical points to determine if we found the max value or min value for your surface. So let's go ahead and put this in an example. Let's take a look at examples so you can see how all this works. So we're going to take, for example, one, our surface is going to be x times y plus 14, all right? And our constraint, our constraint x squared plus y squared equals 18. So we want to take a look at our surface within our constraint, okay, within our constraint, and we want to see where the highest, the high and lowest point, maximum and minimum values within our constraint. So, and we're going to utilize our Lagrange multiplier to help us uh, set up a system so we can find our critical points. So we only have two variables here. We don't have an x, y, and z. We only have two variables. So what do we want to do to start? Well, let's go ahead and set up our system. Our system says we're going to take the partial of the surface with respect to x, set that equal to lambda times our partial with respect to our constraint with respect to x. We're going to take the partial of our surface with respect to y, set that equal to lambda times partial of our constraint with respect to y. And we have our constraint. Okay, we have our constraint to use, which, uh, so we're going to utilize these three equations, solve the system to get our critical point, and then we'll analyze the critical points to see which one's maximum in value. So let's do what this says. So we want to take the partial of our surface with respect to x. x is the variable, hold y constant, and when you do that here, you get y equals, okay, and we want to set that equal to lambda, and that's multiplied by the partial with respect to x of our surface. Take the partial of, so our, our constraint here, g, this is our constraint. So our constraint, make sure all the variables are to the left, your k value to the right, so you can see how the constraint is supposed to look with all the variables to the left, and then the uh, k value to the right. When we take the partial with respect to x, it's two times x, all right? All right, let's do the same thing here. Take the partial of your surface with respect to y. When we take the partial of the surface with respect to y, we're going to have x equals, okay, equals lambda times the partial of our constraint with respect to y. That gives us 2 times y, all right? And, of course, we have our constraint, our x squared plus y squared equals 18. Okay. Now what we need to do here is we need to take these three equations and we need to use these three equations to somehow figure out what our critical values are. Lambda is there to help us, okay, and it makes it look a little bit busier, but it is there to help us. So let's see what's happening over here. Let me go ahead and divide both sides by 2x. I'm going to divide both sides. So over here I have lambda equals y over 2x, okay. All right, and then what am I doing with this here? Well, let's go ahead and divide both sides by 2y, and here I have my lambda equals x over 2y. All right, so, and you know, and I have my constraint to use, but you know, so I have lambda equals this, and I have lambda equals that. And you can use this in any way you want. You can get x equals in terms of lambda, x equals in terms of, you, any way you want, but here's what I'm seeing here. So lambda equals this, solve each of these for lambda. You introduce lambda to help you, okay? Now, since lambda equals this and lambda equals that, okay, what do I have here? Well, that means that y over 2x must equal x over 2y, okay? So I have this because I said that I have lambda equals in first equation, lambda equals a second, so I can set those equal, all right? Cross multiply here, I have 2x squared, all right? So 2x squared equals this way 2y squared. Because I have a proportion, I can cross multiply, divide both sides by 2, so x squared equals y squared. 
introducing lambda gave me another perspective so I can see my relationship. X squared and Y squared are the same, so I have my system to solve. I have my constraint where I can see X squared plus Y squared add up to 18, and then from introducing lambda to get my relationship between X squared, Y squared, X squared and Y squared are equal to each other. So I'm gonna solve this system right here, okay? So this system says what? It says X squared plus Y squared equals 18. This is what it says, right? And I know that x squared and y squared are the same thing. So x squared, okay, plus, well, instead of y squared, right, instead of y squared, let me take the y squared out, substitute x squared in. So now I can solve for x, I have 2x squared, I have 2x squared equals 18. Divide by 2, so x squared equals 9. So my x's are going to be positive and negative 3, all right? X's are plus and minus 3, all right? And then, so x squared equals y squared, right? Since x squared equals y squared, okay? So x squared is what, nine? So nine equals y squared. So y is plus or minus three. Okay, so my y is plus or minus three, all right? So what do I have for my critical points, all right? So what do I have for my critical points? I have, um, I'll list them. I'll list all four combinations, right? So I have x is three and y is three. I have x is 3 and y is negative 3, okay, so negative 3, all right, I have x is negative 3 and y is positive 3, and I have x is negative 3 and y is negative 3. These are, these are my critical points. So we're using the Lagrange multiplier, and so these are the critical points right here. You're introducing the Lagrange multiplier to find your critical points, and that's the hard part of the problem. So once you identify your critical points, we want to know the absolute max of value and the absolute min of value. So how do we determine that? Just take your critical points and plug them right back into the multivariate function. And the biggest z-coordinate that you generate is going to be your maximum value. And the smallest z-coordinate is going to be your minimum value. Okay, so let me look at this multivariate function here. Our multivariate function, we're going to take these and we're going to plug them into the multivariate function. Our multivariate function says take x times y and add 14 is what it says. Okay, now I'm taking x times y. So I want to think through these points. Instead of evaluating in all four points here, really if I plug in positive 3, positive 3, when you take two numbers, two positive numbers, multiply them, it's a positive. When you take two negative numbers and multiply them, it's also a positive. Okay, so I'm, I'm noticing that. So if I plug in 3, 3 for x and y, it's going to be the same exact value as if I plug in negative 3 and negative 3. Okay, 3 times 3, 9 plus 14 is 23. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. 9 plus 14 is 23. So I have, there's, there's one of my values, okay? Now what happens when I plug in positive 3 and negative 3 for x and y? I multiply in them, so I'm going to get the same values if I plug in negative 3x and positive 3 for y. It's going to be the same value. 3 times negative 3 or negative 3 times positive 3 gives me a negative 9, and so negative 9 and a positive 14 is 5, all right? So conclusion, here's our conclusion. Look at the z value here. All right, 23, so this is our maximum value. And five, this is our minimum value. All right, so here's our maximum value, here's our minimum value, and here is the conclusion um, to this problem right here. All right, so for this surface right here, given the constraint x squared plus y squared equals 18, our maximum value is located at 3, 3, or negative 3, negative 3, 23 is the maximum value, all right? And then our minimum value is going to be 5 for this multivariate surface. So you see that you're going to set up, you're going to introduce your lambda, you're going to introduce lambda, your Lagrange multiplier gets introduced to help you build your system of equations, all right? Lambda really is going to help you get that relationship between the x's and y's so you can use it to, in your constraint, it, help you, it helps you find your critical numbers. So lambda is there, looks like a busy system of equations to solve, but lambda is there to help you um, get that relationship so you can find your critical values, all right? Let's do one more example. We're gonna do one more example that's x, y, and z, a, a function of three variables. Um, and also there's something else that happens. It's, um, it only has one critical point. Um, when we do the next example and the one critical point. So how do you know if it's a max or a min? So we've got something going on with our next example. So let's go ahead and take a look at one more example using Lagrange.
multipliers to find out our extreme value of a surface. All right, so we're gonna look at example number two. Example number two, right? And so, and then example number two is gonna be a function of three variables. We're gonna have an x, y, and a z. So we'll use all of the equations over here. So we have, for example number two, um, let's do example number two, is going to be um, x, y, and z, okay? So multivariate function of three variables, and we're gonna call this x squared plus y squared plus z squared, okay? And our constraint, all right, our constraint is x plus y plus z equals 12. All right, so our multivariate function here is x squared plus y squared plus z squared, and our constraint, that's our g equation, our constraint is gonna be x plus y plus z equals 12. So we start, we start, and I won't copy the equations down, they're over here for you to see on the screen, okay? So we're going to take our first partial of our multivariate surface uh, with respect to x, we're gonna take, so that's two x, we're gonna set that equal to lambda multiplied by, make sure all the variables are on the left, so multiplied by derivative of our constraint with respect to x is just one, isn't it? All right. And then we're gonna take, let's do the y, so we're gonna take the first partial with respect to y, so that's two y, set that equal to lambda times the partial with respect to y, okay? And then we're gonna take the partial with respect to z, so two z equals lambda times, we take the partial of the constraint with respect to z, that's also one, all right? So we have, what do we have here? We have lambda equals two x, we have lambda equals two y, and we have lambda equals two z. So this is what we have when we introduce lambda. All the while, no, we also have the constraint. Okay, that's at our disposal to use as well. And the constraint says that the x plus y plus z all add up to 12. Okay, so we want to find, and we're going to use lambda to help us solve this system. Okay, so because lambda equals this and this and that, we can set this and this and that equal. So 2x, set it equal to 2y, set it equal to 2z. They're all equal to each other since lambda equals each of the three. You can divide every single term here by two. So x equals y equals z. So this is one of our two equations. Lambda helps us generate the relationship between the x, y, z. And we're going to use the constraint as our other equation. And we're going to use this to try to solve the system. You can probably see what we're looking at here. X and Y and Z are all equal to each other and they add up to 12, which means each of the values must be four. If you wanted to solve X plus Y plus Z equals 12, well, you have X plus, mm, yeah, Y, you can take the Y, Y and X are the same thing, you can substitute that in, okay? And then uh, that's a plus sign, right? So, and then you can, uh, same thing with Z, Z and X are the same thing, so you can substitute that in if you just need to see a substitution. Since X, Y, and Z are all the same, so you have uh, three times X equals, thinking ahead here, three times X equals 12, divide by three, so X is four. So since X is four, then Y, X is four, and Y is four, and Z is four. Okay, so this is your order, to, so this is where your, um, this is your critical point. That's your critical point for this surface right here. There's your critical point, all right? So what do we do with the critical point? We need to take the critical point and plug it into our multivariate function here, okay? So we're gonna take this information here. We're gonna take our multivariate function, plug in four for X and four for Y and four for Z because we wanna figure out what the value is. So it's gonna be what? Four squared plus four squared plus four squared, 16 plus 16 plus 16. So when we plug four X, four for Y, four for Z into our multivariate function, we get 48, okay? So we have 48. Now, here's the catch, okay? The catch, okay, is this an extreme, is this an absolute maximum or is this a minimum value? What did we find? Did we find a maximum or a minimum value? If you only have one critical point, you gotta figure out which one it is, okay? Is it a maximum value or is it a minimum value? How do we figure out if it's a maximum or a minimum, okay? All right, what you need to do, so we need to determine, we need to determine if this, 
all right, if this, right, okay, is a max or min value. Okay, so we need to figure that out if they, because you only have one critical number. So how do we determine that? Well, you're gonna, you're gonna take the constraint, okay? You're gonna use the constraint, which is x plus y plus z equals 12. You can find any ordered triple that works in this constraint. You can use anything. You have infinitely many possibilities, okay? Pick anything you want. What works in this constraint? Maybe 0, 0, 12, okay? All right, so maybe 0 plus 0, 0, 12 works, okay? So let me just put 0 plus 0 plus 12 equals 12. Use anything you want. Now plug that into your function, okay? You can take anything you want, okay? You can take 3, 3, 6. 3 plus 3 is 6, and 6 is 12. You can take 2 and 2 and 8. You can take 12 and 0 and 0. You can take 10 and 1 and 1. Take anything you want, any x, y, z that you want, and you want to plug, make sure that it works in the constraint. Once you pick anything you want that works in this constraint, plug it into your multivariate function, 0 squared, 0 squared, and 12 squared. Well, that gives me 144, doesn't it? Okay, so because this value came out bigger than my value, all right, my value is a minimum value. It's a minimum value because I picked a test value and the value on my test value came out larger. So if your test value comes out larger, then you found a minimum, all right, and if your test value comes out smaller, you found a maximum value, and that's how this works, all right? So we're using Lagrange multipliers really to help us set up a system of equations that relates our x's and y's and z's so we can use it with the constraint to find our critical numbers. We're looking for our critical numbers, right? If you have more than one critical number, um, then you can classify, uh, you can look at the, the, you know, the output value to figure out if it's a, if it's a maximum or a minimum value, okay? Um, but if you only have one critical value, if you only have one critical number, if you only have one, well then you're going to have to use the constraint to figure and just find something that works in the constraint. You have infinitely many possibilities, right? So find something that works in the constraint, anything you want to, find something that works in the constraint. If your value that you test comes out bigger than what you're generated here, you found a minimum. Okay, um, if your test value comes out smaller, then your critical number would be a maximum value. All right, so this is how Lagrange multipliers work with given one constraint. Hope this um, helps if you're uh, working through this um, application of partial derivatives in your Calc 3 class. So uh, if it does, I'd appreciate if you hit the subscribe button. We'd always appreciate that. So anyways, thank you for watching. Take care.